Hello and welcome to the eighth appendix to the Hello and welcome to the eighth appendix to the tutorial on writing your own operating system. Now in the last two videos we implemented um, the transmission control protocol, but yeah, at least something that's kind of compatible with that. Not a complete TCP implementation. Um, yeah, but we didn't implement the receive method yet. So we could send data and we could send a connect uh, the request to a connection. Uh, we could send the date, the information that we want to disconnect. Um, but uh, we still need to be able to um, to process the return data that we get. So last video we sent a synchronized message to a server. We received the acknowledgement of that, uh, but we didn't send the corresponding acknowledge to that, and that's why um, why the server kept re-asking us for the acknowledgement. Um, and we also haven't implemented uh, anything for this finalize and for uh, termination of, uh, of the connection. So we'll just uh, jump right into that. So what do we have? Um, we get data from IPv4, okay? Now if, yeah, this should be different actually because, um, so the TCP header that we use has four extra bytes for options which are not necessarily there. So I will make, um, I will do this like this. Uh, the size needs to be at least 20 because that's the smallest size, the smallest legal size of a TCP header. Then, I put, yeah, this uh, pointer over the, over the data that we receive. Yeah, this basically works the way like in UDP. So we iterate our sockets and look for a socket which uh, is responsible for this message. Okay, let's see. I think this isn't exactly a good idea to handle this at this position. So we will make a big switch here and uh, distinguish the cases, but we will only look at uh, the three bits, synchronize, acknowledge, and finalize. Okay, so if we find a state, uh, a socket that is listening on the port that he is looking for, so this uh, will just be done in the case of a sin. And this only if um, um, if we actually have a socket, you know, so So 
So if we find a listening one and So if, if the sender wants to synchronize and this is a listening socket, then we set the socket to this value, to the one that we found here, okay? So the other one wants to synchronize and we are listening, okay. So if we have a socket, So only if the socket is actually, so we go into the switch only if we have found a socket, okay? And if we have found a socket, um, that is, uh, yeah, we, we now look at these three uh, flags. And if uh, only the synchronize is set, it means the other guy wants to connect to us, but we only allow that um, if we are actually listening. So I will um, make a bool here. And this will be uh, false usually, but um, set to true if we want to terminate the connection. So if someone tries to connect to us without us being listening, um, then we terminate the connection. And if we are listening, we go to syn received. Then we set the acknowledgement number to the sequence number that we get from uh, the message. But that is in big endian, so we have to switch the endianness again. And we have to set this plus one. I can tell you this was really uh, something that made me go crazy. Uh, this plus one, which I didn't have there for some time and took me quite a while to figure out that it has to be there. <laughs>
So we set the sequence number again to this fixed number, which isn't a good idea, but because of security reasons, but uh, I will use that for now. Uh, the socket is already in the in our list. Then we send a synac. And after that, we have to increase our own sequence number. Okay, so if we are a server, we are listening, we get a syn, we send a syn ack. Okay? That's what we are doing here. So much code. So if we get a synac, So we should only get a synac if we have sent a syn before. And otherwise we terminate the connection again. So then we set the connection to established. Um. Oh yes. Um. Then we have to do the same thing. We have to set uh, the acknowledgement number to the sequence number. plus one, increase our own sequence number. Okay. And then we send the acknowledgement. Like this, okay? So we have synchronized, we have synchronized acknowledge. Um, then there are two cases that are just illegal. You cannot synchronize and finalize in the same message.
So in my implementation, uh, I did the finalization a bit hackish. Mm. So because um, because as I've said, the acknowledge and finalize could be in different um, could be in different um, messages. Um, I implemented it so that fin and fin ag are basically treated in the same way. And uh, in both cases, I mean, if I get a fin, I should send a fin and an egg. And if I'm on this side and I receive a fin or fin egg, uh, then I send an egg. So, but but it's okay to um, to include the fin also in this message. So that's why I um, I did it so that uh, in both cases. Um, I go to some common state of, yeah, I'm currently closing and uh, sending fin plus egg both. So in this case, I'm currently established, then I wouldn't get a fin egg in the first place uh, unless the other one wants to disconnect. So, so that means I am going to fin weight one. Uh, no, I don't go, go to fin weight one. Fin weight one is where I go when I disconnect myself. Um, in this case, I go to close weight. So when I 
was established, I get a fin. Then I send an acknowledgement. And uh, finac after that. So if we are in close weight, that means we had gotten a fin, have sent an acknowledge, and our own fin. So now we should get just the acknowledge. Yeah, this this should actually only be an acknowledge, but um, but uh, whatever. So uh, we will also talk about that case in the um, in the case. In the acknowledge case, okay. So we had gotten a fin. We have sent a fin ack, and now we receive the last ack, which could also contain a fin ack. Uh, could also contain a fin. So we set this to closed. Um, uh, yeah. So this is the final state. In this case, we set remove to true. Actually, no, that's nonsense. So if at the end of the handling the socket is closed, then we remove it from the from our list. And we achieve that by setting it closed here.
and um, yeah, if we get a fin arc, while we are already in. Is that if we are in fin weight one? If we send a fin, we receive a fin arc. That means we have the fin and the egg, so then we should go to time weight. But uh, we don't actually do the time weight for. Uh, because it would take too long to implement that now. So then I would um, So this means the other guy wants to disconnect. We um, we acknowledge that, and then we get uh, his acknowledgement and just set the state to closed. Uh, otherwise, if we have sent a fin, then we receive possibly a fin arc or a single fin. But uh, that's um, these are both in. Uh, both in this case here, so so we have sent a fin, we have received a fin ACK. So we just have to send a final ACK. And removing it from the list is done later. Okay, so then we only have two cases left. The acknowledge, if we get an acknowledgement. And if we, if there isn't any of these bits set, so, so it's not a message that controls the behavior of the, uh, of the socket. So this is uh, really the case where we, um, where we really handle the data, so we pass it to the handler. Okay, so we received an ACK. So if we were in sin received, 
That means we were listening before, we had gotten a syn, sent a syn ak, and now we have gotten the final ak. So that means we now go to the established state. If we were in fin weight one, then we go to fin weight two. So that means we get the fin and uh, hack in different messages. And if we were in close weight, hmm, this is strange. There seems to be some mistake. Um, I mean, when we sent the data, we already increase. Uh, where are we? we already increase the sequence number by the size, but actually, um, the sequence number should be set to. Uh, the acknowledgement number in the acknowledge case. Um, but whatever. So, um, So if we are in close weight, we receive a fin sending. Okay. We receive a fin sending back. Then we send another fin and receive another back. So actually, close weight should shouldn't actually exist. Because we sent the both these messages at once anyway, so so because of that, I will just remove this state. Okay, so now we go to the case where we actually handle the, uh, the data that we get. So we pass it to the handler. So 
So uh, we compare the sequence number of the message that we get to our own acknowledgement number. If they aren't uh, identical, that means uh, the packets have arrived in a different order and um, yeah, we cannot handle this yet. So and I will have this handler return a pool. And uh, the boolean that we get from it uh, will tell us if we are supposed to um, if we are supposed to reset the connection after that. So the the protocol that or, or the handler that we talk to might say can can now say hey uh, kill this connection, okay? In this case, it will say true, so um, which means keep the connection alive. So after that, if we don't reset, uh, if we don't reset, then uh, then we acknowledge the data that we've got. don't add the total size, we add the payload size, which is size uh, no. We have to look at the header size that is written in the header. So we acknowledge the um, the length of the payload that we've got. So 
So we pass the data to the handler. If it says we should keep the connection alive, then uh, we acknowledge the data that we've received. Okay, before we start handling this stuff, um, we will check the message for the reset flag first. And in that case, the socket is not zero. So we will only go into this handling here. So if we get a reset, we set the socket to close directly, then we don't get into this uh, switch, into these switch cases, and uh, instead we will just remove the socket from our list. So what um, what uh, systems in TCP sometimes do is they send you data together with an acknowledgement message. Uh, I'm really wondering about my code here at this point because So if, yeah, the question is what kind of an egg is that? So um, if we, if it's a syn egg, um, 
I mean, when can we get an egg? As a response to a synac. In that case, uh, we don't go any further. Then we return false. I don't get what uh, why my code works like this here. So what I've written in my code is um, so for for the piggybacking. Uh, th this is called piggybacking. You send uh, your data, and with your data, you also send an acknowledge to a previous message. So. Um, But why do I have, I mean, what I have here is um, if the message flags, it's just an acknowledge and nothing else. Then I break out of this. Um, so, so I don't go into the default case, but that doesn't make sense. I mean, I think it should be if it's not equal to egg, because if it, if egg is the only bit that is set there, um, then there might be some data piggybacking. I don't know. So I think it should be like this. Um, but the point uh, is that I don't uh, always break at this point. So if I get an egg, which is uh, um, So then usually, uh, if I only have an egg, then then I give this also to the handler. Okay, then we also need some code for the reset. Um, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> because the reset might not have uh, might not have a corresponding socket attached to it, so all we can do actually is with return true, returning the um, the data block that we have received ourselves. But then we have to do all this stuff with uh, um, with a pseudo header again. So uh, I don't know. So in the kernel, I'm going to uh, make a copy of the UDP handler.
So I'm opening a server again. Getting the re the result here. I mean, the connect seems to work. I don't know. Uh, so I'm clearly uh, too exhausted to uh, continue with this right now. So um, so, but um, yeah, I will uh, make another video. Apparently, uh, looking into this, why this didn't work right now, but. Uh, yeah, as I've said, I'm just too exhausted right now, so, um, so just tune in next time. Yeah, yeah that, this kind of frustrates me now, but, uh, so don't like this video, okay? <laughs> uh, but still subscribe so that you don't miss the next video when you, um, when we will see what the problem was and, uh, yeah, so see you next time. Bye.